Hello and welcome to this V-Suite version 0.3 video tutorial and in this video tutorial I'm just going to quickly cover how to specify an NV zone for an Energy Plus thermal analysis. So I'm going to start with uh, what looks like uh, pretty much my default scene. I have a cube, uh, got a lamp and a camera but I have opened up a node editor down here, created a V-Suite node tree and I've created a VI location node within it. And um, if you don't know how to get to this point, then the previous videos in the vSuite version 0.3 series will show you how to do that. Um, so I'm just going to make uh, a very basic room out of my default cube. One thing to be aware of from the very beginning is that Energy Plus considers any geometry below the Z0 line, so below this gridded plane here, to be um, subterranean and it won't deal with it in sort of a regular way. So unless you want your building to be subterranean, it's important to put all your geometry above your Z0 plane. Um, well, I'm just going to create uh, a very simple room. I'll just raise the roof slightly might extrude out a wing of the building a little bit um, actually I might make that a little bit further um, and I might say that in this face and in this face I'm going to have windows so I'm just going to insert a face into each of those faces. Um, so that'll do for a very very simple geometry. Um, another important thing to recognize is that the geometry required by Energy Plus when we run the simulation is only planar geometry. It doesn't want or need um, walls with depth or um, sort of three-dimensional sort of constructions. It only requires a shell, effectively, or planar faces that encompass your room volume. To demonstrate a feature of the V-Suite later on in this video, I will simply create a thicker wall here around this window. Uh, and I'll show you then later on how we can or how Envy automatically reduces this extra geometry that we don't need on this thicker wall. Um, but otherwise that's fine. So now that the geometry has basically been constructed, I need to tell um, Envy and Energy Plus when it runs in the background what these faces are made of and in terms of uh, building construction. And to do that, we use, once again, Blender's material system. So if I go to the material tab, now one thing I will do first is before we specify material construction choices, we do have to let Envy know that this is a thermal zone. And to do that, we go into the object data panel. And at the bottom here, you see this menu V-Suite zone definition. And within that, I can pick Envy zone. And then I have an option for that zone to be either a thermal zone or just a, a shading geometry for another zone. But because we want to do a thermal analysis on this particular room, I'm going to keep that as thermal. So now I can go into the material tab and uh, this default cube has a default material associated with it. And the first material you associate with an object, it will apply to all the faces of the object. So this material I'm just going to call walls. Uh, and that's now applied to all the faces of the geometry. And I can then come down here and I can say in my NB construction type that the walls are of type wall. And then I've got some options on how to build up the construction layers of that walls material. So I can either use a preset uh, wall construction from the inbuilt vSuite database 
or I can build up the wall via layers and I can have up to five layers and each of those layers can either be read from a database of materials or they can be created by a custom material where you have to specify the key properties like um, density, conductivity, uh, thickness, etc. But for the purposes of this video, just to keep things quick, I'm going to stick with preset and I'm going to pick the standard external wall material for the blender material associated with this model. When you uh, use the preset materials, um, the values of thickness you get by default uh, are 100 millimeters. But it will give you here on the right hand side uh, a more reasonable thickness for those um, different types of um, construction layer that you've got. So for an external wall, uh, it recommends a default of 200 millimeters of thermal wall insulation. So that's what I'll put in for now. Um, so that walls material has now been given construction characteristics and they apply to every face of this room. But I don't want them to apply to every face in this room. I want different materials or different constructions for my roof and my floor and my windows as well. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select my two roof materials or my two roof faces, create a new material slot, assign that material slot to those faces and create a new material. I call that roof and again I now specify roof as a construction type and I can just fill in now the default thicknesses for the layers of this preset construction type. Uh, I'll do the same with the floor. New material slot, assign that to those faces, call that floor and as you might have guessed, that's a floor type. And again, just going to have a preset ground floor and change my thicknesses to the recommended or default values. Uh, windows, if I select my two windows, actually I'm only going to select one of the windows at the moment just to demonstrate something again in a moment that the NV component can do. Uh, new material slot, assign that to that window face, call it window, and that is now a window construction type. And uh, I'm just going to go with standard low E double glazing. So, apart from that intentional mistake of not applying the window material to this face, my building is now specified pretty much as I want it to be. So I now need an NV geometry node, which just has one button in it. And when I click it, the uh, valid geometry or geometry which has been specified as having an NV construction material is copied from this layer one and it is placed on layer two. And it will color code that geometry to show what's been designated as a roof, uh, which is green, what's been designated as a floor, which is brown, and what's been designated as a window, turquoise. The other color is red for shading geometry. So we can instantly see two things about this model which are incorrect. One is that we don't have uh, this face here as being considered as a window uh, construction because I didn't specify it as such and we still have this three-dimensional geometry on this part of the building because the initial walls material was applied to every face before we then took individual faces and applied a different material to them and Energy Plus doesn't want this thick wall construction because we specify thickness and construction types to these planar surfaces instead. So what I can do is if I go back to layer one, I can now pick my other window surface, select window and assign it. And what I can also do 
is I can pick the faces of the extrusion and I can create a new material or a new material slot, assign it, new material, call it extrude and then leave the NB construction type as none. So now when I click export again and go to layer two I should see, oh, there's something wrong has happened with that window. Let me just check that. Oh, I think I still had that window selected when I selected my extrude faces. Make sure that's window again. Export. And now on layer two, I should see that I've lost that extrusion from that wall because those faces had no NV construction associated with them and that this face is now indeed recognized as a window. So that's the very basics of uh, the sort of geometry and uh, geometry uh, thermal characteristics specification. I can now add another export node, an NV context node, and I'll just expand that window. NV context node takes the geometry node and it takes the VI location node, but the VI location node must be set to EPW so that we can supply an Energy Plus weather file for the Energy Plus simulation. Um, once we've done that, then we get the export button appear here, but we also have this op some options in the node to specify a sort of nominal name for the project, um, what sort of terrain exposure or environmental exposure the building is exposed to. We can have a start month and an end month of the year. And obviously picking a, a shorter range of the year will result in a, a quicker simulation, but you'll only have then have data to visualize within that month range. We can step, set the time steps per hour. So a good value here is normally four. So we do a calculation effectively every 15 minutes and that helps us um, see some, some of the more transient time dependent effects within the simulation. And this bottom section here is where we specify what results we want to, or what parameters we want to simulate, what outputs from the simulation we want so that we can then graph them and visualize them. So we have various um, heating and cooling watts, etc. But we haven't specified in this very simple case any heating or cooling system. I'll cover that in a future video. So at the moment we can just pick temperature because a, even an unserviced building will have a temperature. Uh, and we can also specify humidity if we want. So um, that'll do for now. These um, sort of uh, checkboxes are related to this main menu where we can specify different types of metric related to these sort of broad categories. So in zone ventilation, we could um, uh, take a, a model or do a simulation of um, CO2, for example. Uh, for some reason, my mouse has gone dead. Hmm. Excuse me a moment. Now there we go. No, why are you? It's a pain, my mouse has gone dead. Right, I'm gonna to have to use my other mouse, which is nowhere near as nice. Um, so, but I'm gonna have that turned off for now. Um, I'm just gonna do temperature and, humi temperature and humidity. So if I export that, the zone goes back to the default color. And within Blender's text editor, we can now see that Energy Plus input file that's been created. So this is the complete file we need that lists all the uh, material faces and their constructions, uh, etc. So once we've got that, and we can change this file in this text editor, and when we do a simulation, it'll pick up the changes in that text file if we uh, save that text after we've edited it. So that all looks fine. I can now add a 
analysis MV simulation. That takes the context out from the context out node. We have here just a, a text box where we can give a specific name to the names of the results files that will be produced. But I'll keep that as results as now. And we can just press calculate. So it'll tell us the Blender screen remains interactive and it will tell us, uh, give us an estimate of how far into the simulation we are. And when that's done, um, we can now start to visualize those results. There are two ways to visualize. There's this uh, V-Suite display tab, which you'll be familiar with if you've seen the Livy tutorials or the Shadow Study tutorial. Um, I'm not going to cover these um, NV display options in this video. They're a little bit experimental anyway. Uh, but what I will show you is just the simple graphing capability. So if we create a V-Suite chart node, I can now draw from the results node into the V-Suite chart node. And every time I draw a connection, this node will read the data available in this node and give us some menus here to control what metric we are going to plot. So by default, an NV simulation will produce um, the ambient conditions and make them available to be graphed. So climate appears in this menu. Um, and because I picked temperature and humidity, zone also appears. So I've only got one zone, so it's that zone, and I've got temperature and humidity available to plot. So if I press create plot, then it takes a couple of seconds first time. We get a plot of the temperature for the ambient climate and for the zone for the whole year. So we can see that in general, our cube follows our uh, climate temperature uh, with some peaks usually in the summer which might indicate some solar gain coming into the building um, and this uh, this follows the ambient temperature this closely because we haven't yet specified any temperature uh, any heating or cooling for the space um, we can change the range of days that we create that plot for and we can also select not just hourly data, but we can say the data is, uh, we only want to plot daily data. But once we've plotted or chosen to plot daily data, we need to say what we're going to do with the hourly data within each day. Do we produce or plot the average of the hourly data or the maximum or the minimum, for example. Um, so I think this is sort of a complete NV node setup. Um, and I think that's basically everything I need to say in this NV introduction video. Okay, thanks for watching.